we need to write each fraction as a decimal. And the way to do this is to remember that some fractions have decimal place values. So we know that the first digit after the decimal point is the tenths digit and then the second digit after the decimal point is the hundredths digit. So we can find equivalent fractions for the fractions that we have here with a denominator of either 10 or 100 because then we'll be able to write them as a decimal. So first we have 3 fifths. Now 10 is a multiple of 5 so we can find a fraction equivalent to 3 fifths which has a denominator of 10. We use multiplication to find equivalent fractions and 5 times 2 is 10. What we do to the denominator we do to the numerator as well and 3 times 2 is 6. So now that we know that 3 fifths is equivalent to 6 tenths which means it's the same size as 6 tenths we can write it as a decimal because the first digit after the decimal point is the tenths digit so we can write that as 0.6. Next we have 3 quarters. Here we can't change 3 quarters into tenths because 10 is not a multiple of 4 it's not in the 4 times table. But 100 is a multiple of 4 so we can change 3 quarters into hundredths. Now 4 times 25 is 100 if you think counting in 25's we have 25, 50, 75 and the fourth multiple is 100. So what we do to the denominator we do to the numerator as well so with 3 times 25 well we can count 25, 50 the third multiple of 25 is 75. So 3 quarters is equivalent to 75 hundredths. Remember that denominator of 100 tells us that we can't go past the hundredths place value column so we need to write 75 hundredths as 0.75 so the 7 gets shifted over into the tenths because we can't go past the hundredths column and remember the second digit after the decimal point is the hundredths so we can only have two digits after the decimal point if we have a denominator of 100. Now we have 4 over 25. Well 100 is a multiple of 25 and 25 times 4 is 100. What we do to the denominator we do to the numerator as well and 4 times 4 is 16. So the denominator of 100 tells us that we need two digits after the decimal point so we write 16 hundredths as 0.16 so the 1 gets moved over to the tenths. Finally we have 12 fiftieths. Well 100 is in the 50 times table because 50 times 2 is 100 so we do the same to the numerator and 12 times 2 is 24. So now that we know that 12 fiftieths is equivalent or the same size as 24 hundredths we know that we can write it as the decimal 0.24. So let's have a look at this first question. We had 3 fifths. We found that that was equivalent to 6 tenths and notice the same amount of the rectangle or fraction bar is shaded blue but splitting it into tenths is important because tenths have a decimal place value so we could write that as 0.6. Then we had 3 quarters. If we take off the quarters grid and put a hundredths grid on top of it we need to do some rearranging because we have some half rectangles but when we do that we can see that we have 75 hundredths so that's 0.75 because you can imagine 70 of these hundredths so these 7 lines that go all the way down are the same size as tenths so that's why the 7 digit gets shifted over to the tenths column. Then we have 4 twenty-fifths. We changed those twenty-fifths into hundredths and that meant that we had 16 hundredths so 0 0.16. Finally we had 12 fiftieths we change that into 24 hundredths 
so that we could write it as the decimal 0.24. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope that was helpful. If you're a teacher or a parent then please subscribe or go to keystage2maths.com to download resources for this lesson and many more. That's all for now, I'll see you in the next video.